Question number 13 says four objects, a hoop, a solid cylinder, a solid sphere, and a thin spherical shell. Each has a mass of 5.39 kilograms and a radius of 0 0.252 meters. A. Find the moment of inertia for each object as it rotates about the axis shown in the table above. B. Suppose each object is rolled down a ramp. Rank the translational speed of each object from highest to lowest. And C. Rank the object's rotational kinetic energy from highest to lowest as the objects roll down the ramp. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to point out that this, this chart here gives us the moment of inertia equation for everything. And I want to point out that in every equation, mr squared is the exact same because it says in the, in the question that, um, it, well, I'll just read it. It says that each object has a mass of 5.39. So all the masses are the same. And each object has a radius of 0.252. So all these are going to be the same. So I want to define this as i. i equals something. We'll call it k. i equals something times m r squared. And this one, that something is 1. And this one, the something is 2 fifths. And this one, it's 1 half. So the k equals 1. k equals 2 fifths. k equals 1 half. Over here, k equals 2 thirds. I'm just going to call it k. And it's going to make our, our equations a little bit easier to follow as I go through them. And same thing for down here. It's 1 third and it's 1 twelfth. Only on here, there's a difference. But we won't, we won't need to know that difference except for on part A. On part B and C, it doesn't even ask about these guys. So we don't have to um, really pay much attention to these except in the first part. But it is important to notice that instead of the radius, it wants the entire length of the bar for the moments of inertia equation on these two. OK, so the first part of the equation, it wants us to find the moment of inertia for everything. So all we have to do is mr doesn't change. For, for these four, we need mr squared. And that number doesn't change. So if you just calculate it out, the mass was 5.39 5.39 kilograms. The radius was 0 0.2, 0 0.252. And we're going to square that value. And we're going to multiply those together. The number you should get is um, is m r squared equals 0 0.34. Uh, we'll just round it to 3.42. m r squared equals 0 0.342. So all you got to do is now plug in your value for k. For this would be you plug in one, and so for the the hoop slash cylinder slash uh, shell thing. For this one, you plug in 2 fifths. For this one, you plug in 1 half. For this one, you plug in thir uh, 2 thirds. And then for these down here, um, I've plugged in the value of uh, 2 r, 2 times the radius, to get the length. And then I squared that value and times it by the mass. And so you just got to plug in 1 twelfth right here or 1 third right here. So for the, uh, this one right here, we get 0 0.3. For two, for this one it is uh, actually let's do these in order. For the solid cylinder, 0 0.17114. For the solid sphere, it's 0 0.1369. For the thin spherical shell, it's uh, 0 0.22819. So now it asks um, in part B. Suppose each object is rolled down a ramp. Rank the translational speed of each object from highest to lowest. So the transla translational speed, like if this is a ball and it's rolling downhill, it's it's the the speed at which its its velocity is. So the translational speed would be like the speed that that the outer edge of the radius is moving which would be equal to the velocity. And part C wants to know the rotational kinetic energy. So um, here's what we're going to do to find both of those. We're going to do the, we're going to use the conservation of energy. So the potential energy plus the, the kinetic energy, uh, translational kinetic energy plus the, 
plus the um, rotational kinetic energy, the, these are initial values, are going to be equal to the final values. So plus Ke translational plus Ke rotational going to equal to the final values. And so what we can do is we know that the initial values of the rotation and the and the translational energy is zero, so we just uh, we, we can say that the potential energy initially is equal to, and then we know that the final potential energy is zero, so it's equal to the the final kinetic energy translational and plus the final kinetic energy rotational. And then we can further break that down to say that the potential energy is equal to one half of m v squared plus plus one half of i omega squared. So the first thing that's easiest to do right away is uh, um, to factor out the the one half. So we can say that the potential energy um, times two equal. Well, we won't times it by two yet. We'll factor first. So this equals one half times m v squared plus i omega squared. So the moment of inertia times the rotational, or the angular speed. Before we go any further, I'm going to break down the potential energy. Potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. And so um, then we want to multiply both sides by two. So two times mass times gravity times height equals mv squared plus moment of inertia plus rotational uh, speed, angular speed squared. And we don't actually need the uh, parentheses anymore. And then the, the next thing to do is we need to, we need to say, well, what is, what is I, what is, what is omega? Well, we know that omega equals the velocity divided by the radius. So if we do, if we want to break this down further, we can say 2 times mgh equals mv squared. And what we want to do is we want to get everything into terms of, of velocity so that we can find translational energy. So it, it equals mv squared plus i times v over r times v over r. So that's omega squared. That's squaring that. So it ends up being, um, it ends up being v squared over r squared v squared over r squared. And then this is where it becomes uh, very important that we used uh, k as our, as our transforming uh, unit. So in, this is going to be 2mv squared plus kmr squared times v squared over r squared. So I, I said, like we said earlier in the first um, portion, that typically the the uh, moment of inertia is going to equal m mass times radius squared, but whenever, but we're going to put a k in there to represent each of these numbers. So we're going to say it equals k. So it equals. Let me get back to here. It equals k times m r squared, and then we can cancel out our radiuses squared. So we find we end up with two times mass times gravity times height equals m v squared plus k m v squared. And you'll notice that all three terms have mass in it. So we could actually factor out mass first. We'd get 2 m g h equals mass times velocity squared plus k times velocity squared. And we, would, we could divide by mass on both sides, and it would cancel out. And then we would have 2 times gravity times height equals v squared plus k plus k v squared. And we could factor out the v squared as well. And we would say that 2, G, two times gravity times, times height equals v squared times k plus 1. And then we could divide by k plus 1. And we would have our, our v squared term. So 2 g h divided by k plus 1 equals v squared. When you take the square root of that, so the square root of 2gh over k plus 1 equals the velocity. And so now um, we have everything we need except for one important thing in order to figure out how all of these things compare in their, in their translational speed. 
So we know what the gra gravity is 9.8, so we could do 2 times 9.8 times h over k. And k is different for every one of them, but we know what k is. So over k plus 1 equals the velocity. And so the higher velocity is going to have the higher translational speed. And so uh, we know that as k gets larger, the velocity gets lower. So for example, going back to this first page, k, the, this one has a k of 1. It's the highest k value, so it's going to have the lowest velocity and therefore the lowest um, translational speed. Or so the lowest velocity is the lowest is translational speed. So translational speed. And so you can rank these all in reverse order of k. So uh, this is going to be the lowest. Then the next lowest will be uh, one, uh, 2 thirds. And then the next lowest is 1 half. And the, the highest would be the solid sphere will have the highest velocity. So you should, uh, you should select the one that has solid sphere is greater than solid cylinder. And then it says it's greater than the thin spherical is greater than the hoop. And so that's going to be the answer B. On part C, um, we have to do the same thing. So PE, uh, and we, we're going to say that the kinetic and, and uh, rotational energies are zero beginning with, equals, and then the potential energy is zero at the end. So it's going to equal one half of mv squared uh, plus, plus one half of i omega squared. And this time, we want to solve for omega, because omega is, is directly proportional to the kinetic energy of, of, the, um, rotational, of the rotational energy. So KER equals 1 half I omega squared. So we want to figure out what omega is. Um, and then we can use that in conjunction with our I value to figure out what the uh, the highest um, kinetic energy is. And so what we can do is we know that the velocity equals equals the uh, r the angular speed times the radius. And so we can replace v squared here so we get the potential energy equals one half of the omega times radius times omega times radius. So that would be this would be v, and this would be v, so that would be v squared. And so what we end up getting is omega squared times radius squared plus i times omega squared. And I'm supposed to have a, an m right here, one half of m. And then uh, what you notice is that PE, when we break down PE, everything's going to be exactly the same. We're going to be able to, and this is one half, we're going to be able to factor out the one half. We're going to be able to cancel out our masses. And so we get the gravity times the height equals mass, uh, not even mass, equals, equals um, and it's two times gravity times height equals omega squared times radius squared plus k times radius squared times omega squared. And so k, k times m r squared is the i. And we've factored out our m's. And we've factored out our 1 half. So that's the only thing we did in that step. And so now in order to solve, we can, we can actually factor out omega squared right here. And because uh, it, it's in both terms. So when we factor out the omega squared, get 2 times gravity times height equals omega squared times r squared plus plus k r squared. And all you have to do is factor over, or is to divide both sides by, by this part of the term. And we get 2 times gravity times height over radius squared plus k radius squared. All of that equals omega squared. So the final equation is these, the square root of 2 times gravity times the height divided by r squared, r squared plus k r squared is going to equal the angular speed. Now, the, the difference here is for kinetic energy, for rotational kinetic energy, um, you have to multiply it by 1 half of i times 
the uh, the rotational uh, the angular speed squared. So you you actually don't have to square root this to figure out the final uh, value. You just have to use this term in place of of that. And the difference here is that i is going to determine because the the angular speed as as k gets larger, it is going to make this term smaller. But it's going to you're going to see that it balances out with i. So um, k e of rotational equals one half. And I, we said I was K times times M times R squared. And we're going to use this term in place of, of omega squared. So times 2 times the gravity times the height over R squared plus K R squared. And uh, when you go through, you plug in your different values for K, both there and there. And what you'll get is if you pick any height, it doesn't matter what it is. We'll just say it is, um, we'll just say it's 11.8 meters. And that'll make this equation simple because that turns this term, this whole term turns into, it turns into 9.8 times 11.8 times 2, which is 232. So we got a, a, a constant on top of 232. So the rotational energy is equal to one half times k times the mass times r squared times 232 over r squared plus k plus k r squared. And if you use that, you're going to see that this term is more important than the k in this term. And so this k actually determines um, the the rotational kinetic energy, the relative values. So we come back here and we look and we say that the one, the one is the highest, so it's going to have the highest kinetic energy, whereas two fifths is the lowest and it will have the lowest kinetic energy. So it will be on this end of the spectrum, and then not kinetic energy, but kinetic rotational energy.